my channel, my friends. So today is the first video in our new apartment. Now, I'm not gonna show it to you because I like to tease, but also, that's not really the point, but also it's just not decorated. Like, I've kind of done this area. That's pretty much it. So um, yeah, give me a couple of weeks and then I'll show you a full home tour. But today, I wanted to talk you through my new and improved workout routine. So I know last week I was talking about the training that I did to prepare for the Navy SEALs fitness test, but that was for a temporary goal, for a very particular set of skills, you could say. I will find you. Um, wait, let me just get back to my... Yeah, so anyway, that was the Navy SEALs. We've done that, say goodbye to it. Now I'm back to a more consistent, long-term routine that's, you know, new and improved. I'm excited to share it with you. So I'm gonna take you through that first. So you're gonna see day by day everything that I'm doing and I'll talk you through it. And then after that, I'm gonna talk through how to actually get the most out of your workout routine because there's no point having like the perfect workout routine and then implementing it wrong and then not getting the results that you want because that's just, then we're just putting in work and not getting anything back from it. And that's like the hardest feeling to deal with. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about my tips and tricks and little secrets that help me like get the most out of my workout routine. But yeah, we'll just get straight into it. So if you like it, give me a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit that little notification bell as well, and we'll start with day one. Okay, so day number one. Day number one is a full body workout. I go to the gym, I spend no more than an hour in the gym doing a full body workout. I just wanna engage all of my muscles and actually I have a little bit more of a focus on upper body. So developing upper body strength and that can be with heavy weights with fewer reps or by developing my strength to weight ratio, which means I'm focusing on body weight movements, so dips, pull-ups, or some stuff that I've learned from gymnastics, like a full body press, just to kind of get like my whole upper body feeling really strong and my whole core feeling really strong. So that's what I like to focus on on this first full body day. So I engage my lower body a little bit, but in a way where it's working with my core and my upper body. So my aim with this session overall is to get my whole body working together. I'm not really about isolating particular areas of my body. I'll isolate sometimes, but only just to kind of fill in the gaps. Not really, I don't really focus on isolating movements. And in case you're not sure what an isolating move is, it's about being very, very specific about a particular muscle that you're trying to target. So bicep is a great example. Bicep curls, fully isolating, you know, look at them guns. Just pure, pure isolation right there. Overall, day number one is tiring. I leave the gym feeling really tired because obviously all of my moves are compound. I'm using large muscle groups, so it's all using a lot of energy. And so I leave feeling, you know, like wipe that sweat away. I need a good night's sleep. And then we move on to day two. So day two is skills. Now with skills, this is something I'm really working on. So I wanna develop balance, proprioception, aerial awareness, spatial awareness, flexibility, reaction times. I need about three minutes in this position to drop down like another couple of centimeters, but then it'll be my full split. So yeah, we're not looking at much more than this. When I think of skills, I think ninja. So I should actually really call this day my ninja day. But basically that means sometimes I'm focusing on handstand work, sometimes I'm working on uh, my splits, sometimes I'm working on my back flips, and I'm really trying to get my back flips down on concrete. And Mario's being really, really helpful with it because it scares me shitless. I am genuinely so scared of it. I don't know why I have absolutely no problem doing it on a gymnastics floor. As soon as I move it outside, freaks me the fuck out, like I'm scared of it. So my ninja day or my skill day is only about 30 minutes because I want it to be really focused. It's not necessarily the most tiring workout and actually you could say it's quite light. I don't even break a sweat most of the time, but I wanna stay super focused, like mentally focused. I don't have any music playing and it's just strict work. So day three, we're back in the gym. It's a lower body workout. It never lasts more than one hour. And I like to focus at the start on some heavy weight. You know, like get that strong man feeling 
back in. So I start off with some compound moves, so either deadlifts, front squats, back squats, lunges. So that's that strength work. We're doing one to five reps per set. So we're having long rest times. It's really exhausting because it's actually targeting your whole central nervous system rather than just your muscles, which is more that hypertrophy movement where you're doing maybe eight, 10, 15 reps per set. Here, we're really cutting down the rep count because I wanna focus on that strength, you know, just, just. They, they honestly need this as a new emoji because they've always got that bicep one. I'm bored of it, you know, give me this. So that's kind of what I like to focus on at the start of my sessions. And I try and focus on one of those strength movements every week. Now, strength stuff is amazing. And I love having a base of strength and I love working on it and it's important to me, but I can't do too much of it because it kind of counteracts what I'm doing in gymnastics, which requires a lot of fast twitch muscle fiber movement. I need to be quick, you know, like quick off the bat. And so I don't focus on it too much. And that's why I like these lower body sessions because I blend that strength in with some plyometric and explosive work that I do with maybe box jumps or kneeling squat jumps like I show on my Instagram and some resistance band sprints. All of these things keep my fast switch muscle fibers going in my lower body. And that's kind of really important to me as well so that it complements the skills sessions that I do in gymnastics. Plus, I kind of blend that in, you know, like mix that in with a little bit of functional hypertrophy. So that means that we're working in the eight to 15 rep range, but we're not doing it with machines. Instead, I'm using dumbbells, I'm using kettlebells, I'm using plates, free weights, you know? So things where there's a lot more stabilization muscles going on, it's a lot more compound. So I am targeting the lower body, but there's other stuff getting involved as well. You know, like sometimes the core wants a little bit more action and I'm okay with it. So yeah, so my lower body day is a big mix of strength, functional hypertrophy and explosive movements and that just makes sure that I hit the goals that I want to hit. Now we're moving on to day four which is a rest day. Now I'm very serious about my rest days. You could say deadly serious about my rest days and on my rest days guess what I do? I rest. I don't do anything apart from like get on with the rest of my life which is probably sitting at a desk for like 10 hours but I don't actually do any training. For me, a rest day is, see you later, I don't even have a gym membership. What? I froze the account. I take them very seriously and I think they're super important because that's where we recover. So if I don't give myself enough time to recover, then I can't go into my next session feeling fresh as a daisy. So, on my rest days, I just eat as I normally would, do my work, take a chill pill, annoy Mario, do a little bit of decorating at the moment, but that's it. So now it's day five, I feel rested, I feel calm, I've well and truly annoyed Mario, and I hit myself with a one and a half hour gymnastic session. Now this gymnastic session has 45 minutes where we all do as a group some kind of like basic drills. So we're doing forward rolls, backward rolls, handstand walks, dive forward rolls, I absolutely hate those. But that's kind of like a planned 45 minute portion of the gymnastic session. And then the other 45 minutes is kind of freestyle. So I can kind of work on whatever I wanna work on. At the moment, I'm working on my front somersaults, my back somersaults. I can kind of do an aerial. I just need to pluck the courage to actually be able to do it on the floor. And then I'm still working on my flag, which I got at one point. I actually got the flag. And guess what? Then I didn't do it and then I lost it. So now I'm reworking on getting my flag back and yeah, I'm excited. So that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment. And I just spend about like 10 to 15 minutes on each of those things. In the past, I used to focus on like a four hour doing just backflips, but in the end I'd fatigue and my technique gets worse. So I tend to find that that like 10 to 15 minute sweet spot is really good to keep progressing week on week. So it's kind of like with that skill work, I want those good reps, I want that good focus, and I want those positive vibes, you know? So then day six, we've got the second full body workout of the routine. So this workout is a little bit more explosive, a little bit more dynamic. So one of the things I love about these workouts is bringing in asymmetric movements and unilateral movements. So asymmetric means that the way 
weight isn't evenly distributed across my body. And then unilateral means that I'm working two sides of the body independently. So for example, a lunge is a unilateral movement, a squat is not a unilateral movement. And I love unilateral movements because they actually iron out imbalances. So before, I used to have a weaker right leg. Really weird because I'm right-handed, so it shouldn't really work that way. But anyway, my right leg was weaker. And when I was doing bilateral movements, all the time, like just squats all the time without really doing any lunges, I didn't notice it. But over time, those imbalances can hold back your progress because if your right leg or if my right leg isn't contributing as much in a squat, then I won't be able to squat as heavy. So it's important that both legs are functioning equally. So that's why I love my unilateral movements. And then I also use this session to also kind of iron out, smooth out any things that I didn't work on earlier in the week. And so yeah, I kind of use it as like a little bit of a gap filler. So let's say I didn't do enough upper body work, then I'll do a little bit more upper body work. So I kind of leave about 20 minutes to kind of just fill in any gaps. And then day seven is another rest day. So again, I take these super seriously. Now, if I'm feeling a little bit sore, I'll just go for a light walk or I just do some, you know, I mean, if I'm really honest, I'll just get married to give me a little bit of a massage. <laughs> but sometimes, I won't be too lazy and I'll actually do a little bit of stretching. So I just stretch whilst I'm watching TV, you know? So I just take that time to kind of relax, do a little bit of active recovery if I need it because I'm feeling sore and then I'm just ready to start the week again. Okay, so that was the seven days. That was kind of my ideal weekly workout routine. Now I want to talk about how I can actually make that routine work for me and how I get the best results from that workout split. Because you can have the perfect split and still not get results. So it's important that you kind of apply it properly. The first thing I wanna say is that this is an ideal week. You know, like if just the heavens opened and you just had rays of sunshine and it's just like, ah, get on with your weekly workout routine, you can do it in peace and quiet. But we often know that life gets in the way. You know, like it sees you going about your life and it's like, ah, Oh, you found the perfect workout split, did you? Yeah, no, nah, it's not gonna happen. Like for me, my workout routine, that ideal workout routine, I probably manage to hit 50% of the time. And the other 50% of the time, I get like two or three or four workouts out of the five in. Now I am really serious about hitting my goals, but unless I'm gonna compete, like I'm gonna take up an Ironman again and I really need to hit those sessions, for me at the moment, like fitness is just there to kind of make me feel better, make me feel happier, get me out of my office and just, just make my whole life better. I don't really let it create stress or make me feel bad. Like, no, don't make me feel guilty about this, okay? It's just how it's gonna be. And I think that's the beauty of realizing that you don't have two weeks to create your body and healthy mindset. You have years. So yeah, if I only had like three or four sessions that I can do in that week, I'll just drop whichever one least excites me during that time. Now, if you do have a particular goal and there's something that's just more of a priority for you, so like building muscle and you need to cut a session out, then you can be more tactical about which session you actually choose to drop. So if your focus is on building muscle, then maybe you can cut out the HIIT session or drop a little bit of cardio that week and focus more on the resistance training. And that whole idea of the ideal week is how I build my training programs. I build the ideal week based on the science to help you get your goal, and whether that's building muscle whilst maintaining functionality or losing fat whilst maintaining your metabolism or just getting restarted into a training program they're built in the ideal week. But that's not to say that you need to hit every single session in the order that I wrote it on that day. Your job is to take that science, know that it's gonna get you the results, but to actually apply it to your lifestyle. And there's guidance in those programs to help you do that. So feel free to just switch things around, push things back. It needs to work and revolve around you and your lifestyle. The second thing is having good workouts. And I think that's something that's really easily missed. And when I say good workouts, I mean you've had enough sleep, you've rested properly, you've eaten enough, you feel mentally good for those sessions, and you're not getting distracted by rate of perceived exertion. Now your rate of perceived exertion is how hard you feel that you're working. And that's really important because you can feel exhausted. You can feel dead in a workout and have a really high rate of perceived exertion. You're like, I 
I'm KO'd, you know? But that doesn't mean that you've had a good session and you've actually had a true high level of output if you haven't been sleeping enough, you haven't rested enough, you didn't eat enough or properly. Because rate of perceived exertion doesn't mean the same thing as your actual energy output or your actual exertion. And I see this a lot in HIIT, so I get comments from people being like, oh, I did this HIIT workout, but I reduced the rest sessions from 30 seconds to five seconds. And straight away, I know that they actually didn't exert that much energy. They actually didn't have a HIIT workout. They're not gonna get the benefits of HIIT. They didn't actually have a high energy output. They just felt like they were dead but those two things don't always mean the same and they don't always match up. And this part is really important, okay? Let's do some real talk here. This current training split is not how I built my body. This current training split is not how I built my metabolism so that I'm eating 2.3 to 2.5 calories, <laughs> thousand calories a day. And it's not how I built my muscle. It's not how I built my muscle in my legs or my upper body. And it's also not how I lose fat if that's my goal. And I think that's important to remember because I guess when I was learning about fitness and when I just started training in the gym maybe like three or four years ago, I would look up to people and see their current training split and think that that was how they got their foundation. And so I lost a bit of time because I was trying to do their training routine, which is for where they were in their journey, rather than the goals that I had at the time. And so my goal right now is to maintain that functionality that I built as a competitive athlete so that I can kind of branch out into whatever I want to do. For me, training is about fun now. That's why I try and do the flag. That's why I've gotten into gymnastics. So that's exactly why I built my training programs because I know that we're all at different stages in our training journeys. And so whether your goal is to build muscle and build your metabolism, or it's to lose fat and protect your metabolism, or it's just to get back into a normal training routine, all of those goals need a really specific approach. And so my programs are basically how I did it at the time. Plus, I mean, I've just kept on learning over these last few years. I've done hundreds of hours of reading through sports science research and, and textbooks and, and speaking to world leading sports performance dietitians or coaches. And so I've learned so much more that I've put into my programs. So my programs are like what I did, minus all the mistakes, plus loads more science and loads more insight from like truly world leading experts so that you can basically do that journey and not make my mistakes. So if your goal is to build your metabolism, build some muscle, lose some fat, create a healthy routine, those things need more of a specialist approach. It's not the same as maintaining. With maintaining, I can do a couple of sets of hypertrophy to maintain the muscle that I've built. But to actually build that muscle in the first place, that's a lot more technical. That's kind of one thing that I just wanted to touch on, that this is my current training split and I share it with you because I keep getting questions about it, but it's not how I got to this point. So that's it, that's kind of like my current training routine. I just thought it'd be kind of useful to share, but it is important to still remember that everyone is at a different stage. And for me right now, like I wanna focus on just having fun with it and maintaining what I've already built and just being ready for anything. Like if someone challenges me to a duel, I'm ready. Um, but yeah, I'm also decorating this place. I have a really clear vision for it. Like I can see it, I just haven't done it yet. So you guys just need to give me a little bit of time because it's just been like go, 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 go since we moved in and I haven't really had the time to kind of decorate it or anything. So I'm working on it, but once it's done, I'll give you a full home tour. And yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing week ahead. I love you and I'll see you next time. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button if you liked it with the little notification bell. I love you. Bye.